Hey, peeps, what's going on? Got an interesting tidbit for everybody, especially the guys to think about. Uh, anytime you put a woman as a center of your un universe or you make her your project, she's going to eventually leave you. And why is that? It's simple. Once you vacate the things that you enjoy the most and devote all your time and attention to her, that's a whole level of being needy and clingy. But uh, just a little something for everybody to think about, especially the guys that are currently dating, looking to get into a relationship, out there chasing the girls on the dating market. Take that advice. Um, I just got done watching an episode of Terrence Pop. If you don't know who that is, very popular YouTube channel. He's very big in the Red Pill community. He saved over, let's say, close to 550 lives since he started his YouTube channel. Great guy, um, very knowledgeable, likes to talk about administrative violence. Go check at his channel, Terrence Pop, easy search. But today, I want to talk about, I've got a field report that came in last night into, into this morning. I've been talking with a friend of mine. He's out there on the dating market trying to get a girl who uh, wants to have a long-term relationship with a woman, which I think, hey, that's that's great. If you can do that, awesome, more power to you. But he knows, as well as I know, and a lot of guys know, that the dating market is a cesspool of shit. I look at it as the top 10 to 15 guys are over here, and the top 10 to 15% of the girls are are far apart and in between that two groups of people that are trying to find each other is the cesspool dating market just flooded with disgusting fat nasty looking people and these two groups of people up here cannot see each other to make a connection because of the swamp that's between them you got uh, 100% of the girls buying for the top 10 or 15% of the guys, and same thing with the girls. You got the top 10% of women, and you got all 100% of the men buying to get those top 10 to 15% of the women, okay? I believe there's a top 10 to 15% in each sex, and it's just these people are having a hard time finding each other to make that mutual connection, form that bond, because in reality, if you're a man, who wants to date a woman that's fat, obese, She's a slob. She's got baggage. You know, we're talking about like your single mothers. We're talking about women with BPD, other mental disorders. We're talking about um, addictions to alcohol, drugs, prescription pills, what have you. And uh, and the list goes on and on. You know, numerous pets. You know, we got to save the animals. We got to save, you know, your liberal women, your democratic women. And same thing for the guys. We're looking at the same traits, you know. Guys are out there getting fat, obese. They're not out there in the gym. They're not doing the work. They're not being desirable for for the girls. Uh. And so again, you got you got a small group of both sexes rising to the occasion, but yet because the swamp is so full of undesirables, these two groups of people are having a hard time finding each other. And and in my my buddy's particular case, he met a girl on Facebook dating. So he's telling me about this girl, gives me her name, her age. I'm not going to put her name out here, but she's a 38-year-old woman, single mother, don't know the age of the kid exactly. She hasn't gone into that with him. But they uh, matched on Facebook dating the other day. They start chatting it up. They start talking about, you know, of course, in her profile, she indicates she's looking for a long-term partner. Okay. And I got to read some of the chat. I didn't get into in depth of it, but toward the end of their conversation, and and actually she unmatches from him. Okay, so she asks, you know, hey, what are you looking for? And he says, well, I'm looking for short term to possibly long term, depending on if the woman is qualified to go long term. You know, he's one of these guys that watches other YouTube channels, gets advice from other guys, and and is actually applying that knowledge into his own dating life. And why not? It 
you know, you'll cover your ass that way. But anyway, so she's like, okay, um, so do you, are you looking for like sex and, and all that? And he's like, well, that's part of the, the dating, you know, the sex and intimacy has to be there. And one thing that he's learned through his red pill conditioning was that, you know, women must have a strong, burning, genuine desire for you. And they know that when they first meet you. It doesn't have to necessarily be online. I mean, it it's a lot different. When you meet a woman in person, she will know right away, and if not very soon, if she is genuinely attracted to you. Okay. So as they're commuting back and forth, they're expressing their goals, what their long-term ambitions are. And for him, he would like to be in a long-term committed relationship with somebody. But like I said, again, it's the top 15% of men and the top 15% of women are, are, are rise to the occasion. But in between that, those two groups of people is the, the swamp of disgusting, undesirable people. So he's laying down what he's looking for. You know, I want a woman that's, you know, I tell guys to look for women that are fit, feminine, friendly, faithful, and fun. And you can replace fun. If you're below the age of 35, you can replace fun with fertile, okay? For me, it's I, I, I choose fun. Guys my age shouldn't be looking at having kids. I think we're too damn old for that nonsense. And so he pretty much tells her, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a woman that wants to build. I don't want a woman that's a wrecking ball. She's got to be fit, feminine, friendly, faithful, fun. And he's rattling all that off to her. And she replies back, oh, I see. And she goes on to say, well, you know, what I'm really looking for is a guy that pretty much looking for a man in the top top 10 to 15 percent when you read the when you read what she's saying to him. But in the end of her statement she goes on to say well i'm not willing to, to be intimate or sexual with anybody unless uh unless our relationship goals and intentions are aligned so that tells me right so he's telling me this stuff and i actually read it and i said you know she wants to withhold sex from you until you can give her some sort of verbal agreement that you will that you will agree to enter into a relationship with her. She wants assurances that you're gonna enter into a long term commitment before the sex and intimacy even starts, and that's that's bullshit. That's a red flag right there because that's saying that's telling me right there that anytime you have sex with this woman, it's gonna be transactional. So if you agree to a long term commitment with this woman. You're pretty much agreeing to a transactional relationship. We're moving, you know, moving forward. And what that entails is, okay, so you agree, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd like to be in a long-term relationship, but you don't get to test drive the car first. It's like going to a car lot and not test driving a vehicle before you buy it. You don't know if you're buying a lemon or not. You're taking a chance. And so anyways, with this situation, you might date this girl five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten times, and not have sex with her until you can give her a almost a verbal agreement saying, yeah, I'm gonna I'm ready to enter that long-term relationship with you. And then she'll have sex with you. It's transactional. If you give her what she wants, then she'll give you what you want. And that's not how that works. And even though she typed that in there, I told this guy, I said I would give her, here's what I'd tell her. You know, and this guy's easily in the top 10, 15 percent. He's not a bad looking guy. He works hard, goes to the gym, does the work. His height alone, I mean, he's six foot two, six foot three. His height alone puts him in the top 14 percent of guys. So, I mean, he's up there. It's the kind of guy that could land any girl he wants. But for him to even try to entertain this nonsense is unreal. Pretty much lay it down like this. I'd say, well, you know, I understand you want to have, you want to withhold sex and intimacy until after you have agreed in agreed to some long term agreement. I tell her I don't do that. That's not that's not how I operate. Guys don't, you know, most guys do not operate like that. I mean, there's guys that would. Oh, I'm sure there's probably a, your beta males, your simps would agree to that. Okay, because you're a good man. You're a good man. 
you will you will comply to her wishes. No, no, most guys don't want to do that because even though she says that, and here's also what I told him. I said, here, tell, ask her this. Ask her, would you sleep with Jason Momoa on the first date, or would you make him wait until there was some kind of guarantee of a relationship? You know, relationship goals or whatever are lying. Ask her if she would do that. And he did. And of course, she never answered. And she immediately read what he read his answer and then immediately unmatched from him. So she never gave a reply. So I said, well, exactly. Because if she goes, if you agreed to meet her at one of the local coffee shops or for a drink somewhere, even though she said that, if she deems you to be in the top 10 or 15% of men, She's going to break all those rules because she's going to look at you as the alpha guy, the Chad. Okay. You're Chad. And she'll want to bang your bones after you guys have your coffee or your drink. It could be at your place or her place, but she's going to want to want to jump your bones right down the first date. She's not going to wait to find out later if you're the one. If she deems you're the one, if you are at her level or point or two higher in the SMB, sexual market value, she's going to want to bang you right now and she's gonna and she'll decide if you're that kind of guy immediately on the first date you walk into starbucks or wherever you walk into the local bar and you meet there and you sit down or drinks you sit down and start talking right there she's going to assess because her hypergamous radar is always on she is there immediately assessing you on the spot making sure you are the guy you're it and when she decides you're it, that genuine desire is there. There is what she says in her profile is pretty much a negotiation of genuine burn desire. What act, what she'll actually do and how she behaves on that first date is going to be completely different than what she says in her profile. Guys, keep that in mind. What women say and what they do are two completely different things. What they'll put in a profile and what actually how they behave if you're the guy if you're the chad they're going to fuck your brains out on the first date and if for some reason they're not having sex with you on the first date which is no biggie i mean when i was young and dumb and rhymed with something full of dumb it wasn't uncommon for yours truly back in my heyday to uh um score on the first date it wasn't uncommon for me to do that. And so, and even after I got divorced and kind of got into the sexual marketplace, there it wasn't uncommon for me to score on the first date. If women deem you're a high-value man, you're going to get laid on the first date. But guys, we have a three-day rule. A three-day rule. If she's not being sexual with you after the third date, you let her go. You exit stage left. You don't owe her any explanation. You don't have to talk to her ever again. You just bolt. You're done. After the third date, okay, first date you might, if the woman is not quite sure, might get a hug. Second date, you ought to be just about kissing by then. You know, you end the date with a kiss. Third date, okay, that's where you as a man decides where is this going? Is she looking to get a free meal or are we are we taking it up a notch or what are we doing here? And if she's not being sexual by the third date or shortly thereafter, you bolt. There is no fourth date, no fifth date or so on. It's you, you just bolt. And if you're a guy of high value, you have other girls in the pipeline waiting for your, um, they're waiting for you. Okay. If you're chatting up, as guys should, you should be talking to multiple girls. If you're out there online dating or if you're out there meeting them out in the town, you should have three or four girls in your phone waiting and willing to date you at a moment's notice. So that way, if that one girl doesn't pan out, you kick her out and you get on to the next one. You know, if Becky doesn't work, toss her out and get a hold of Tara. If she doesn't work, and as you as you're throwing them out, toss them out, you get other girls... You find other women to replace them. You keep a harem. If you're a high-value man, most of these guys are keeping harems of three to five women going. They're spinning plates. 
they're auditioning women because some of these guys, they do want long-term commitment. They want women that are builders. So they keep women in rotation as pretty much auditioning for the, for the role of the long-term partner. And so, and as shitty as this dating market is, it's not like it was in the 80s and 90s dating. You went out and you approached a girl. For one, they weren't fat and disgusting back then. Now it's like, holy crap, you, you go to Walmart. It's, it's like the circus has come to town every fucking day. Fat people everywhere. Girls are tattooed up. They got pierces in their face. They look like they got hit in the face with a tackle box. I mean, come on now. Of course, it's the same thing with guys. I mean, the guys have gone to shit too in quality and looks. You know, guys have gotten fat, disgusting. They, they, most guys nowadays are a product of a single mother. So, dad wasn't in the picture. Dad wasn't there to to maintain law and order in the home. And so these kids are sitting at home playing video games in their mom's basement, eating chicken tendies and. And then as they get older, they're crying about, well, I can't get a girlfriend. The girls don't like me, and I can't. And I, I'm just, I can't do it. I, you want me to go to, why, how do I go to work? Trump gave me a STEMI check last year. Why do I have to go to work? You know, the kind of shit we're dealing with, you know. The same way with the girls, you know, they're, you know, they're voting, voting Democrat. They're, they're doubling down on feminism. They're doubling down on their so-called newfound way of life. That is just, it's just a shit show in the dating market. And it's only going to get worse. So, like I said, in this particular guy's instance, he found a girl that pretty much, or was talking to a girl that wanted to call the shots. And in reality, she... And the truth is, this girl will not respect a man that conforms to her expectations. Because once she achieves that goal, she'll have no use or no respect for that guy. And so when you read the profile, I, read, I looked at her profile. She's working on a master's in social work. So she's getting a, a wasting a ton of money, probably racking up student debt. So this woman's probably coming with student debt, another red flag. She's got a child in tow. We don't know the exact age of this child. And we probably never will know now because she has since unmatched from him. So she's got student loan debt, a bullshit degree in a master's in social work of all things. She's got a child in tow and she's got student loan debt. And she thinks that if she's going to have this relationship. Her next long-term relationship is going to happen her way. No, it's not going to happen her way. You got to realize men and women, you cannot deny what each sex is attracted to. You know, guys want a woman that's, she's got youth and beauty, okay? Women want a man that's secure, resourceful, and protective. And you can't deny, you can't deny that. Even the strongest, the, the most independent women want a man that's masculine. He's secure, he's resourceful, and he's protective. Deep down, that's that's women's desire. I mean, though most of them will deny that. You know, before I got divorced... My soon-to-be ex-wife, or my, well, my wife at the time, this is even before she became my soon-to-be ex, but my wife at the time had told me, I don't need you around. I can do this on my own. And my response was, well, give it time, sweetheart, because you will probably get that chance to do that. And so she did. But even then, women like that crave a man that's strong, masculine, you know, he's secure in his job, he's resourceful, and he's a protector. Deep down, that's what women want. I mean, they're going to deny that until they, until they saddle up with that beta male who puts them as a as their as their project. They put that woman, they put her on a pedestal, they praise her, they they literally drive her nuts with love bombing and all all that other kinds of insanity that she eventually can't stand him because he's more annoying than anything. And so this that's when you read this girl's profile, it looks just exactly. She wants a beta male. She wants somebody that will conform and enter her frame. And that's not going to work. Like I said, some guys, there's, I mean, a lot of guys are beta. A lot of guys are simps. They will jump on board with this and run with it because, Hey, I don't have to do the work. She pretty much, this is what she wants. If I conform to that, Hey, win. No, it's not. 
she'll eventually dump your ass, kick you to the curb, and then she'll try to find the next guy. Because deep down, she wants that alpha male, the alpha Chad. And she's not going to settle, even though she says, when you read the profile, it sounds like she wants a weak beta male. Pretty much probably wants somebody to stand up, rise up, and be the, the stepdaddy to her kid. Okay. Um, but yeah, guys, stay away from him like that. Um, she's probably would probably have been crazy in the sack because she's out and she deems you as a Chad, an alpha Chad. She's not going to wait around and wait for relationship or some kind of alignment of the commitment goals to bang you. If you meet her for coffee and she deems that you are the alpha Chad, she won't wait for the relationship start. She's going to want to try you out right now. So that was just, that's my video for today. Just a uh, brief field report. I get reports from guys. I don't, like I said, uh, I, you know, reports from guys that have different experiences when it comes to meeting women, whether they meet them in person or online. It, it, it just reaffirms our suspicions in the red pill community that women are very delusional and what they want and what they want, what they think they want and what they truly want are completely different. And you got to take notice of that guys. Sometimes it's like, you don't believe what she says, but you believe what she does. So if you can overlook what the profile says and actually say, Hey, let's meet up for a coffee or a drink. You will get to really see what this person, what this woman is like in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Instead of online, you know, you're sitting at home messaging back and forth on the telephone, whatever on Tinder, whatever you're on, whatever you're on, Facebook dating or whatever it is. It's different when you're sitting at home on each on, you know, you're on your couch, she's on her couch, and you're just messaging back and forth, you know, hey, what are you looking for? Uh, well, I'm looking for this. What do you well, I, I want, like to have this? It's different versus when you agree. That's why you should um, try meeting as soon as you match. You know, cut the, the communication to a minimum and then go out and meet her in person. And then you get to see what she's like in person. It's, you, it's like meeting two different people. You're going to meet what she says she wants versus what she really is after if that makes sense. So with that, guys, that's my video. Have a great rest of your day. Toodles.